Hello, this is a Science News. We are at the American Heart Association Scientific Session 2013 in Dallas, and we were just in the uh, Advanced Cardiovascular Disease Complications and Challenges Sessions with my uh, uh, co-moderators here. I am uh, Dr. Hulo from uh, Mount Sinai School of Medicine in uh, New York, and uh, let me please introduce the uh, other moderators. And my name is Tara Chang. I'm from Stanford University. Hi, my name is Amy Sarma. I'm an internal medicine resident at Brigham Women's, Women's Hospital, working with Dr. Michelle O'Donoghue. So maybe I'll start and just ask Dr. Sarma to uh, summarize her work uh, looking at statin potency and kidney injury. Yeah, so we looked at two large randomized trials of patients after an acute coronary syndrome. We looked at Prove It to Me 22, in which patients were randomized either to a moderate potency regimen with pravastatin 40 milligrams or a high potency regimen with atorvastatin 80 milligrams. We also looked at the A to Z trial in which patients had a moderate potency uh, treatment arm with either placebo for, with placebo for four months, followed by simvastatin 20 milligrams, or a high potency arm in which patients received simvastatin 40 milligrams for one month, and then up titrated to simvastatin 80 milligrams. And we looked at trends in serum creatinine over the long-term follow-up period. We also looked at the incidence of kidney injury as uh, defined by a 1.5-fold, 2-fold, or 3-fold increase in serum creatinine from baseline, and also looked at the incidence of investigator-reported adverse events and serious adverse events. And in both studies, we did not see any differences between treatment arms with respect to these different analyses of kidney function throughout the long-term follow-up period. Yes, I think it was an excellent study and very well done. Um, I think in, uh, in putting it into the context of some of the previous observational studies that the point estimates that you found are actually fairly consistent with some of the observational studies suggesting a small but uh, potential increased risk of about 10% of seeing more kidney injury with the high potency statins. And so I think the take home is um, certainly not that we should not treat patients with high potency statins, we sure, certainly should, but especially moving forward, if we do expand the indication for these statins, that looking at adverse outcomes such as kidney injury um, is something we should continue to be vigilant for um, and you know, something that we may or may not see uh, if we do start treating more and more patients, especially those with uh, more underlying uh, risk factors such as chronic kidney disease, uh, moderate to severe chronic kidney disease. Okay, so we had a couple of other studies that were presented today, especially focusing on the biomaterial and new bioengineered tissues. I'm, uh, perhaps you would like to also uh, say a word about these very elegant studies that have been presented with the first in-man use of some uh, uh, tissue-engineered vascular graft, and especially in patients with dialysis, with very encouraging uh, results. It's a fully very original and innovative way to deal with this big problem. Do you want to say a word? Yeah, very exciting work. Um, you know, as we know, dialysis access is one of the biggest problems um, for our hemodialysis patients. They're constantly failing due to thrombosis or fibrosis. Um, and this work, which is preliminary, um, they had about 28 patients, I think, uh, with this uh, novel material, um, but had excellent uh, primary and secondary patency rates. Um, so, you know, the hope is as they expand this and obviously conduct longer term studies, as this was a fairly short six month follow up. Yeah. Um, you know, but if we continue to see such fantastic results, it certainly could uh, have a very positive impact on our on our very challenging dialysis patients. Yeah, yeah, might be a, a life changing things for many patients in the future, actually. And the last study was the result of uh, the Hogmont uh, heart failure trial presented by Douglas Mann, actually. Uh, that was a preliminary result of uh, uh, biomaterial injection directly into the uh, uh, myocardial wall. It was a very encouraging result, but as well very early result because the uh, recruitment is still ongoing. But uh, this is a really original approach to limit the left ventricular dilation and uh, perhaps also in the future we will have this kind of non-pharmacological treatment for heart failure, which will be also very, very original and we are very eager to see the result in the, in the future. This is Science News from the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions in Dallas, Texas.